The latest update has made Korea one of the strongest playing toll nations in the game and I wanted to test how strong they are by doing a 1v1 against Ming after we play toll for the first 30 years or so and I really think the results are gonna surprise you. If we get 10,000 likes I'm also gonna do the chosen one achievement as Korea. There's a few reasons why this nation is so amazing for playing toll as. Obviously the first thing we're gonna get out of the way is the fact that it has quite Quite a little bit of great grasslands and farmlands provinces around this country. Whilst in the north it has mountains and if you build a couple of forts here it's going to be virtually impossible for anyone to go into the rest of the peninsula without having to take those forts which makes it for a very easy to defend region overall. Now we also get a monument in the capital that offers 25% reduction in development costs as well as 20% advisor costs reduction and plus two monthly admin skill for your monarch making your leaders insanely great and a guaranteed two admin is absolutely massive you also start with the 655 and your air is not that bad and the recent update they actually offered an extra 15 development in the capital so it got quite a little bit of a boost another thing that it got boost for is once you do the build to force limit mission it will revoke the privilege that essentially offers you one one stab hit whenever you declare a war on another nation that being said this privilege offers dev cost reduction so if you're not at war with anybody and you're not planning to go to war with anyone anytime soon it's good to have that privilege because it's going to be really cheap to develop provinces so for example if I set this up with encourage development it only cost me 37 mana points to develop this province from the very start of the game we're gonna set up whatever rivals we can go for here and we're gonna summon the diet and check whichever agenda best suits us production development here is pretty easy to get so let's go for that we're also going to give out the plus one military and the plus one diplo points we're not giving out the plus one admin just yet because we only have five percent crownlands so if we were to give this now we would really struggle with our autonomy and as such, we're going to give this in a few years after we see a little bit more crownlands. Make sure you also give out the supremacy over the crown, patronage of the arts. We're also going to increase our stability by one so we get passive prosperity in our provinces. In order to get prosperity ticking, you need to have a minimum of one stability. So if it's below that, you're not getting any prosperity. Which is why it's vital that you get this from the first month when we have the admin points. We also will be giving out the minus 25 advisor cost reduction privilege for all three of the estates and after we're going to be seizing the crownlands so we now have 9.999 crownlands what we can do to offset that is we can develop this province since we already have a mission to develop this province i'll do it twice so i do my mission as well there you go that offered me an extra 41 ducats and we're only getting 0.1 autonomy monthly which means that we're getting no autonomy in our provinces when we are at peace there you go we're actually lowering autonomy and provinces now well that's a china where so let's go for another province we're a lowering autonomy offsetting the debuff that we start from uh, the estates speaking of autonomy we're going to be lowering autonomy in half of our country we start with quite a few provinces that have 60 to 35 autonomy and we need to lower that we also want to be converting the culture of these two provinces in the north so once we get the diplo points we're going to do this because one of our missions is to convert these two provinces to our main culture set up your trade ships in your main trade node and let's get some advisors morale of armies perfect trade efficiency amazing and even national tax in the early game is pretty good now you might have noticed we actually are paying 0.55 ducats per month for each of these advisors these are not 50 percent cheaper advisors these are just reductions from our reform the confucian bureaucracy from the monument that we have in the capital as well as from the privilege that we gave out another great thing about this nation is that we have a Mahayana is a harmonized religion already from the beginning, which means it's 10% cheaper to get ideas and our own national ideas offer another minus 10% idea cost. So it's 20% cheaper to get ideas once we unlock this national idea. Mix that in with the golden age reduction and with innovativeness, which we're going to get a lot of, it's going to be insanely cheap to develop the country as well as insanely cheap to get the ideas. Speaking of ideas, we also get construction cost reduction, infantry combat ability 
reliability, tech cost minus 10%, production efficiency, manpower. If we only had dev cost reduction in the national ideas, this nation would be one of the top five nations in the game. So now obviously we want to go up to force limit, but we don't want to do this just yet. We're going to take advantage of the fact that we have minus 10 dev cost reduction from this privilege, and we're going to use that to develop provinces. One of our missions is to get every province in our country to six development. And before we start devving up provinces, we're going to wait until Renaissance has spawned. So this way we spawn in a little bit of Renaissance as well. We will properly spawn it in, in uh, the capital province anyway, but we might as well add a little bit in each of the other provinces too. Not to worry about getting invaded from the north. We have a truce with Jiangsu from the beginning. So until 49, we don't even need to start paying for our troops. I do recommend you improve relations and get a royal marriage with Ming, the uh, nation that you are a tributary of as that's again one of our missions and in the meanwhile also start getting a claim on Jiangsu for whenever we are ready to expand into that area. Don't forget to also delete the fort in the south of the country. It's one of the most useless forts in the game. It's not protecting anything here and it's a farmlands fort so it's super easy to take as well. We've converted the northern two provinces to Koreans. Now we can do the mission settle the north that offers some prestige and diplo power. We can also do Chinese diplomacy that offers some extra diplo power as well as diplo reputation you will get the event the plight of the peasantry if you do not do the mission plight of the peasantry until 1470s you're gonna get a lot of horrible events so we need to finish off this mission by the 1470s before that you also need to have a total of 17.27 income at least plus 250 ducats in the bank over here so in order to do this we're just gonna be expanding it to Jiangsu and take some of their lands right after our truce is over you will likely be the first one to get all three of the technologies which essentially means it's almost guaranteed to get 12 innovativeness which in turn means lowered power cost for every single interaction that you have what was i saying boys there you go we start with 12 innovativeness y'all truce is over with jiangsu however we're not attacking them just yet because we want to start developing the country and once we are ready to attack we will have to get rid of the inward perfection privilege which essentially you know offers us the dev cost reduction whenever you get the uh, event state council if you can try and get two stability before you actually click this as it offers you one stability so you essentially get up to three stability from the very early game and i have to say that it's ridiculously annoying that renaissance has not yet triggered even though it's 1450 freaking one man why does it always happen when i'm recording it's beyond me finally renaissance has spawned in luca and that means we can start devving up our country remember to have the encouraged development either in all of your provinces before you start devving them up and of course our main goal is to make sure that every province has at least six development because we also increased our development it increased our crown lands available so we can get the plus one admin points now and we can also start getting ready for war so that means we can start recruiting the free company or actually we can even recruit the grand company right now let's go with these boys in heju and let's bring the other army by the border let's start maintaining our army as well Let's also make our heir a general. He's not that bad. I would have hoped for a little bit of siege pips, but he's fine considering everything. Let's also do this mission built to land force limit, which means we don't have inward perfection anymore. And it's not going to cost us one stability to attack Jiangsu. And let's go with the war boyos. If we're lucky, we might be able to bait them a little bit. You might struggle with hordes because they actually get 25% shock damage increase whenever they're fighting in flat terrain. But if you're fighting them in non flat terrain like mountains over here and most of these countries are mountains then they get a debuff of 25% on the minus shock damage inflicted as such five hordes in the right terrain is absolutely vital because these guys only have 7,000 we're gonna go on the offensive their allies have 10,000 so overall we got way more troops than they have do be careful with Jiangsu in particular though they start with a four shock general which is their leader so you don't want to mess around with this guy try and avoid fighting him oh god they attacked me whilst I was sieging down this fort so I have minus two dice roll because I am attacking in mountains but they also get minus 25% shock damage decrease as long as we get good pips I got a zero are you actually kidding me right now I really got a zero my first pip all right well they're getting reinforcements as well so there's no chance in hell I'm actually gonna win this I'm gonna pull out my troops from there better to lose less troops and fight again ha at least I managed to get 2,000 of your troopers oh wow they're actually going for my rebels bruh you're doing me such a great favor i absolutely love
of your uh, alliance of Jiangsu. Also, whilst you're doing that, I'm actually completely sieging down the entirety of the uh, Korchin land. And we're doing this because this is going to be enough for me to peace out Korchin. And without Korchin in the war, Jiangsu only has, what, 7,000, 6,000 troops. Alrighty, boys, that's enough. Let's uh, go back and kill off Jiangsu now. Relievius Siegius Maximus. And we got minus two dice roll for attacker because they are in mountains and they got two nines. Are you actually kidding me? And followed by a six. Why does the AI always get the good rolls and I get the crappy ones? Can someone tell me that? Oh, dude, their leader just died right as they were attacking me. I mean, I'm probably still going to lose this battle, but it's way better fighting this without having to fight against their four shock leader. There you go. We won it, boys. We actually won this and we got a bit of progress for the siege as well. One four down, one to go. Well, 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 Jiangsu, trying to unseat stuff, are we? I cannot let you do that, sir. I cannot let you do that. Oh, what? They got fleet basing rights from Ming. Oh, Ming, what are you doing? You're showing favoritism towards some of your tributaries. Not fair. Oh, my lord, boys. Look at this. Date is massive. They completely killed off Uyasugi and their neighbors. And at the same time, Yamana is also massive. Probably going to end up being a battle royale between Date and Yamana in the Japanese islands. And then I'm going to swoop in and kill everybody afterward. Ooh la la, boyos. We got our first idea slot unlocked. Obviously, guys, we're going to go for quantity ideas here. Oh, no. They're going to try and relieve the siege. Oh, boy. I'm going to have to kill you off. Oh, no. No, they're not relieving the siege. They're just running away like little wussies. Come on, siege. Can you fall? Hello. Finally, 500 days, boys. And they agreed to my termios here. A small coalition of everybody in Manchuria. More than okay. Let's uh, kill off the separatists now and get ready to make these lands full integral parts of our nation. Obviously, I'm going to be concentrating first because I don't want to pay too much admin points for coring all of this stuff up. <laughs> oh my lord, we can get the Oirats as our rivals now. So essentially, the game is telling me I'm as strong as the strongest horde. Okay, fair enough. Because of the lands we took from Jiangsu, we got more crownlands and we're going to get some more crownlands from seizing lands once more. And we are close to 20% crownlands. So to boost that up, we're just going to spend all of our points on developing the province of Hansung even more. And voila, 20% crownlands. Remember, we got this 20% and we also have the plus one military admin and diplo points. Despite starting with the less crownlands than most nations in EU4. And all this by 57 also. There is one achievement you can get as uh, Korea. And namely that is chosen one where you have to have all provinces in the world that are either Buddhist, Shinto, or Confucian under yourself. So it's not really that hard. It's basically just taking out East Asia. So essentially, you can do this by building up your strength in the early part of the game in this peninsula, eating out Ming after their mandate is low. So that means after they one of their reforms and their mandate drops off, that's when you can attack and take care of them. Take their northern provinces, Beijing, snake around, wait for them to collapse, and then just take the rest of it. I'm also going to make this save available on my Patreon page, so I highly recommend you guys check it out if you're interested. And we got a little bit of a coalition forming against us right now. Sadly, not much I can do against this coalition. I hope that they're going to attack me. That would be best. But if they don't attack me, it's all okay because I can take advantage of the time that I wait until they get out of the coalition to consolidate my country, lower the autonomy in the newly conquered provinces, and just do some of my missions that are vital for me to do, like this one here. Oopsie daisy, my power projection is below 50, so we're gonna send a scornful insult to Oirats to increase my power projection. We're doing this because if your power projection is over 50, you get one of each mana points per month, so obviously you always want to keep it at that level. We managed to core up the province of Amnok, which means we got permanent claims on the entirety of our neighborhood, including permanent claims on the Ming lands belonging to Laoning. We have 25% cheaper core creation cost reduction from having these permanent. Also remember to lower the autonomy in provinces that you conquered and to accept the Jurchen culture as that's going to make it easier to keep these provinces under control. Looks like the battle royale in Japan is taking a different turn. Hatakayama is massively expanding now. Basically they have half of the eastern part 
ports and their original province in Key, whilst everybody else is just not doing much, it's a bit of a stalemate. Dai Viet, however, decided it wants to go full historical Vietnam borders and uh, basically killed off most of Champa. They let them keep one province. I absolutely hate when the AI lets the other country keep one province. That's the most annoying thing ever. Time to expand the army. We're gonna recruit another 7,000 units. And of course, we got the minus one stability event because why wouldn't we get this, right, guys? And would you look at that? A renaissance has appeared in Hanseong, which means it's gonna start spreading out to the rest of our provinces from here, as well as to Ming, sadly. But, um, it's all good. Ming's not gonna be around for too much longer. So that means we're gonna switch on over to advancement efforts. Now we have enough money to do prospering economy, which offers us construction cost and dev cost reduction for 25 years. So once you enact this, make sure that you're ready to develop your country like crazy. That's literally what I'm gonna be doing right now. And we can also do plight of the peasants, which gets rid of the horrible peasants disaster that we would get if we don't do this mission by 1470. We can also do expand Hanseong since we've basically expanded it to 50 development and the development of Korea gives us production efficiency, construction cost and local tax modifier. Since we have been developing the country, we got a lot of extra crown lands, so we can sell some of this crown lands for some money and with it, we can adopt the renaissance, meaning that it's going to be super cheap to get the next technologies now and we're going to have the strongest, most technologically advanced armies in Asia. Let's start building a proper trade fleet also since we're at it and we got close to 100 harmony which means we have another minus 10 dev cost reduction well it's uh minus 9.4 right now but it's gonna be minus 10 soon which is why we can develop provinces for 25 mana without even having the economic ideas and the policy from eco quantity fully unlocked yet we managed to get an alliance with ashikaga and we are currying favors because we're gonna ask them in a future war against the ming whoa hold on a second here we can get a 464 air or we can get some mana points and lose 10 harmony you know what i'm actually gonna go for the really chad lord of an air over here i don't mind losing one stability in the process look at this boy absolute massive chad lord guys look at this amazing this is why i absolutely love playing toll workshop being built in hansong gives us 0.78 ducats almost one ducat from a single province man that is actually insane we're actually getting seven ducats on the plus despite only having pretty much the starting provinces which we have developed quite a little bit and we've built quite a few buildings and that is why we are playing toll this time okay also want to mention that uh, the starting leader is an absolute massive chad lord 70 freaking years old man he outlived everybody in his family and i'm sure as soon as i said that he's gonna die the next month isn't he 2.34 ducats from plus three advisor this is a 50 percent cheaper advisor to be fair but still all the other modifiers make this guy insanely cheap looks like ashikaga is starting to actually integrate their vassals and they even have a connection to their starting lands in sagami now who was it that they integrated i didn't pay attention next step we're going to be canceling our tributary status with the uh, nation of ming we can boost up our stability back to three if we want to their mandate is 37 so that means they actually get some debuffs of fire shock and shock damage received plus 12 so our troops gonna do significantly more damage to them than uh, their troops are gonna do to ours that being said they still have hundred and twelve thousand units so I'm gonna call in Ashikaga in that case and I'm gonna go for my province that I want in Andong let's go with this and let's try and get the province of Shenyang as well we can do the righteous army mission because we're fighting a nation that has hundred and fifty percent our army strength however we're gonna keep this a little bit until we actually need it we're close to our max man manpower right now so we don't really need the extra manpower i'm gonna give out some objectives for the alliance members here namely everybody that's on the uh, ashikaga side hopefully they do help a lot of the times they don't really do much but you never know another thing i recommend you do is scorch earth in the provinces of ming this way it's gonna lower their overall mandate because they get devastation in these provinces and we got the province of shenyang i strongly recommend that you barrage this fort if you have enough ships I lost some of my ships, so I do not actually have enough. I need to build some more, so I'm building some galleys right now. But hopefully by the time the galleys are finished, I'll be able to take this fort. Pretty scary when you see 62,000 units going around your fort.
that you're sieging right now, but they're actually going to siege down uh, Shenyang, and they already managed to break down the walls in the first tick. That is ridiculously lucky, not gonna lie. So, I know I'm not actually gonna win this battle, right? But I find it amazing that despite having a hundred thousand units that I'm fighting, I'm actually standing a chance. Like, it's gonna be really freaking close, man. If I get some good dice rolls, I will win against five times my size. Oh, I'm gonna lose this badly. No! Alright, let's just retreat here now. That lost us 2.9 war score. Not too bad. And we managed to kill off quite a few of their troops in the process. For us, manpower is not an issue. And for them, it's a little bit of an issue. They got less manpower than me, actually. I like how the AI decided that having 112,000 units in one tile is not much of a problem. Also, um, what the schnapps men in two ticks, they already got 0% and the fort actually cracked the walls. The cherry on top would now be if this fort actually falls at 7%. It didn't fall. At least we got that going for us. And they just recruited another 20,000 units for some reason. And let's get the manpower that we might as well just get, right? You know what? I'm actually going to recruit some more mercenary units starting with the free company. We might win this by ourselves without any sort of help from the Japanese, which we have not received still. They got movement locked, so they're going to be stuck in Gaizu. If we manage to kill off 20,000 of their units in Gaizu, that's going to be great because 70,000 we can deal with since they have zero manpower left right now. We're basically going to waste this 70,000 whilst they're sieging down our mountain forts because yes we only have mountain forts right now oh boy we're gonna yep yep we stack wipe this army oh dude we literally are crushing them this is all they have left oh my god i literally just melted down half of the ming army in a few battles man it's as if the ai doesn't really get that if i stack wipe them in this position because they made a mistake they should not repeat that mistake again and again i, I literally got three stack wipes already in the same province because they kept sending troops to unsiege guys whilst i had my troops right next to them and now they're sending another army to unsiege guys who are you kidding me right now i'm abusing the dumb ai essentially oh now they retreated they learned they learned the ai has evolved <laughs> are you serious another army is gonna come to guys no way dude yep straight to guys he's coming all right looks like another stack in vapenicum this time it looks like he was about to reinforce but he realized that he's not going to reinforce in time, so he just sent troops to uh, this province that I'm going to kill him in. Remember how they started with 120,000 units? Now they have 56,000 units. Yep, they might have more troops than me, but they still have the debuff from the mandate, so we should still be able to win this battle without any problems. Tadia go. Now let's start sieging down Shenyang. Oh my lord, they hired the Grand Company, man. They actually are super desperate hiring the Grand Company for real. Imagine not retreating from this province like are you dumb or something obviously i'm gonna attack you in my province and i'm gonna completely wipe you out bro what oh this is my favorite right here i they actually don't have any general in that army i took out fifteen thousand of their units because they didn't have any general and they were sieging down my fort peak quality ai guys but guess what we got tech seven so we got artillery pieces so this war is gonna finish very soon all right 49 mana points worth it we took down the walls hopefully Hopefully we manage to get this at 14% if we're a little bit lucky, otherwise we'll just assault it. Once more, assault ski with the uh, artillery, actually that's barrage, not assault. Hey, hey, boyos, Beijing is our. That means we can take a lot more money now, up to 2,800 ducats, and uh, that's it. I don't really want anything else. Like I said, I'm playing tall, so I don't want to take too much land. I just want to develop like crazy the land that I already have, and I'll keep my Ming Bang next to me, so whenever I need more money to build the buildings in my lands i can just take some more from me we can also get the seize the border legion now that offers more permanent claims on these land yos so in the next war this is exactly what we will be taking from ming we can also make them our rivals now and for that matter i'm gonna make ashikaga my rival too since they didn't really help much in this war in fact they didn't help at all in this war i'm kind of pissed i might just attack the uh, japanese islands now let's pay off the loans that we got and let's start building all of these amazing production buildings in our country we can even build some bad barracks as well and we're gonna destroy the fort here and we're gonna replace this with another fort in the province of Bakjek after we finish coring it up of course so for 10,000 likes we're gonna turn this into the chosen one achievement run and check out this awesome Portugal video until the next time. and I want to give a very big thank you to all of my channel members patreon members as well as my twitch supporters I really wouldn't be able to do this without all of your support